Hello, my name is Alkida Baliu and in this video I will talk about distributed lower bounds for ruling sets. This is a joint work with Sebastian Brandt and Dennis Olivetti. So what is this problem for which we show a lower bound and why do we care about it? Ruling sets in the distributed setting were introduced by our book Goldberg, Luby and Plotkin on a paper appeared in Fox 1989. And informally speaking, it is a family of problems described by two parameters, alpha and beta. We will later see what is the role of these parameters. This paper of 89 used ruling sets as a subroutine for distributedly decomposing a network into connected components of small diameter. And since then, ruling sets have often been used as a symmetry breaking subroutine in the design of several algorithms for solving mainstream problems. Also, the family of ruling sets include an important and well-studied problem that is maximal independent set. Before going further on that, let me introduce the context. We are in the distributed setting and the distributed network is modeled by a graph where nodes represent computing entities and edges communication links. We will denote with n the number of nodes in the graph and with delta the maximum degree. More precisely, our model of interest is the local model of distributed computing. In this model, nodes have a unique identifier, there are no bounds on the size of the messages, and there are no bounds on the computational power of a node. The computation proceeds in synchronous rounds, and at each round, each node sends messages to neighbors, receives messages from neighbors, and performs some local computation. The time is measured as the number of rounds needed in order to solve a problem. This is quite a strong model, hence lower bounds for this model are widely applicable. Since there is no bound on the size of the messages, at each round each node can share with the neighbors all the information it knows. Hence, one can see a t-round algorithm in the local model as a mapping from t-hop neighborhoods to outputs. In other words, we are interested in studying the locality of a problem. And what I mean with locality is how far a node needs to see in order to produce its own part of the solution. And if we talk about lower bounds, the question would be how far must a node see, in the worst case, in order to produce its own part of the solution. The goal in the alpha-beta ruling set problem is to select a set of nodes such that the distance between each pair of nodes in the ruling set is at least alpha and each node that is not in the ruling set is a distance at most beta from a node in the ruling set. The figure shows an example of a 2-3 ruling set. Nodes in the ruling set have distance at least 2 from each other and each node not in the ruling set is a distance at most 3 from a node in the ruling set. The family of ruling set problems includes a classical graph problem that is the maximal independent set problem. And please note that I'm talking about maximal independent set and not maximum. That is, we want an independent set that cannot be further extended. Let's see a bit more in detail the role of these parameters alpha and beta in the family of ruling set problems. As already mentioned before, a 2-1 ruling set is equivalent to the maximal independent set problem. Ruling sets may only become easier as alpha decreases, since alpha is a distance lower bound. In fact, for example, a solution for a 5-beta ruling set is a valid solution for all alpha-beta ruling sets with alpha less than 5. And since our goal is to prove lower bounds, we will focus on 2-beta ruling sets, as a lower bound for 2-beta ruling sets directly applies also for ruling sets with larger alpha. On the other hand, since beta is a distance upper bound, the larger is beta, the easier this problem may become. In fact, the solution for the 2-1 ruling set is also a valid solution for 2-beta ruling sets with beta larger than 1. Hence, MIS is the hardest 2-beta ruling set. Let us now see what was known prior to our work regarding 2-beta ruling sets. We will start by exploring what we can do with deterministic algorithms. On the upper bound side, due to a very recent breakthrough from Rojon and Gaffari, 
We know that two beta ruling sets can be solved in polylog and deterministic rounds. On the lower bound side, we knew since the late 80s that MIS requires omega of log star of n rounds. And this applies also to two beta ruling sets for small enough beta. Then in 2014, Kuhn, Moshi Broda, and Vattenhofer showed a lower bound for the MIS problem of omega of square root of log n over log log n. Recently, together with Brandt, Hirvonen, Olivetti, Rabi, and Suomela, we improved this lower bound to log n over log log n. And this was the state of the art for deterministic solutions of two beta ruling sets prior to our work. Let me make some considerations about this progress that we had in our understanding of the maximal independent set problem. All these super log star n lower bounds that we had for MIS are actually directly implied by lower bounds for the maximal matching problem. As we can solve maximal matching on a graph G by running an algorithm for MIS on the line graph of G. Hence, all these super log star n lower bounds for MIS only apply to line graphs, and they do not apply to simpler graph structures such as trees. Also, there is no hope to use these lower bounds for two beta ruling sets when beta is at least two. And this is because we know from a work from Kuhn, Maus, and Weidner that two beta ruling sets are easy on line graphs when beta is at least two. This means that if we want to improve the current log star n lower bound for ruling sets, we cannot prove lower bounds on the line graph. In this paper, we show a lower bound for deterministic algorithms that solve two beta ruling sets. We prove that this problem requires omega of the minimum between log delta over beta log log delta and log in base delta of n. Our lower bound holds for a large range of beta and it holds already on trees. For randomized algorithms, we show a lower bound of omega of the minimum between log delta over beta log log delta and log in base delta of log n. Let's see more closely what our lower bounds mean if we consider complexities expressed solely as a function of n. As mentioned before, this was the state of the art prior to our work. We improved Linear's lower bound and show that on the deterministic side, two beta ruling sets require omega of square root of log n over beta log log n rounds. This reveals that the deterministic complexity of two beta ruling sets lies in the polylog n region, and it is just a matter of discovering the right number of log factors. Moreover, our lower bound already holds on trees, so let's see what we know about these problems on trees. Barenboim and Elkin showed that on trees, MIS can be solved in order of log n over log log n rounds, and their algorithm can actually be extended for two beta ruling sets, at least for some range of beta, and obtain an order of log n over beta log log n upper bound. Prior to our work, the only lower bound that we knew for MIS on trees was Linnaeus lower bound of omega of log star n. We improved such lower bound to omega of square root of log n over log log n rounds. As we can see, now there is just a quadratic gap between lower and upper bounds. On the randomized side, our lower bounds are exponentially worse. We are still far from understanding the right complexity, the right randomized complexity of ruling sets, but our results say that log star of n is not the right answer even for randomized algorithms. The technique that we use for showing our lower bounds is the so-called round elimination technique. So how do we show lower bounds using round elimination? Suppose we want to show a lower bound for our problem of interest that is P0. What we do is we start from P0 and we create a sequence of problems, P1, P2, and so on, such that each problem PI is at least one round easier than the previous problem in the sequence. If we are able to do this for k times, we get to a problem PK. And if we can show that PK cannot be solved in zero rounds, then we get a lower bound of k plus 1 rounds for p0. This technique has been used since the late 80s, 
And for example, lineage omega log star n lower bound for MIS is indeed based on such a technique. The challenge and hence the merit of lineage lower bound is to actually discover this problem's PI. For long, researchers thought that this was more an ad hoc approach rather than a technique. But recently, we began to understand the potential of round elimination and we are understanding more and more about it. In fact, in 2019, Brandt showed that this sequence of problems can actually be found automatically. The bad news is that the description of these problems may grow exponentially. And after just a few steps, we are faced with a problem that is too large to handle. One way to avoid this issue is to try to keep the problem small. So what one can do is to try to relax the problems, hoping that the size of the problem reduces by a lot, while the complexity does not reduce by much. Round elimination is a technique that can be used to obtain upper bounds as well. What we do is we start from P0 and we create a sequence of problems P1, P2 and so on, such that each problem PI is at most one round easier than the previous problem in the sequence. If we are able, after k steps, to reach a problem that is zero round solvable, this directly implies an upper bound of k rounds for P0. So how do we use the round elimination technique to show our lower bounds? We noticed that while it was really challenging to directly obtain a lower bound sequence for ruling sets using ground elimination, it was easier to obtain an upper bound sequence for these problems. The high level idea of what we do is to first provide a good upper bound sequence for ruling sets, and then we show a way to convert this upper bound sequence of problems into a lower bound one. The lower bound that we obtain does not match the upper bound, but we still manage to keep the length of the lower bound sequence long enough to give results that are useful. In the remaining of the talk, we will see some details about the upper bound sequence of problems. In particular, what we do is to show an upper bound of, for ruling sets as a function of a given input coloring. More precisely, we show that given a C coloring, we can obtain a two beta ruling set in order of beta times C to the power of one over beta rounds. This result matches the best known upper bound for solving two beta ruling sets given a C coloring in input, although it solves this problem in a genuinely different way. A problem in our family has beta plus one parameters, x0, x1, up to x beta. These problems are characterized by a coloring component from some color space. Each color has a level from zero to beta, and these parameters x0, x beta determine how many colors we have for each level. We have x0 colors in level zero, x1 colors in level one, and so on. Now let's see what are the constraints of these problems. Each node can either output a color or a pointer plus a level. The first constraint is that the graph induced by the color nodes must result in a proper coloring. In the picture, you can see an example where some nodes are colored, where the numbers just represent the level of each color. The second constraint regards the pointers. In this case, a node must output a pointer, that is one outgoing edge, and a level. We require that the pointer of level x reaches either a node with pointer of level at most x minus 1 or a node colored with a color of level at most x minus 1. Let's see an example of a problem in this problem family. Consider the problem P1000. In this example, beta is 3. So in this problem, we have four levels from 0 to 3 and we have just one color in level zero and no colors in the other levels. Given a solution to this problem in zero rounds, we can get a solution for the two, three ruling set problem. In fact, notice that nodes that output a color must form an independent set, since by definition, they should result in a proper partial coloring. So these nodes can safely enter the ruling set. 
All other nodes, that is, the ones that output a pointer, they will not enter the ruling set. Since the levels of the pointers must strictly decrease at each step, then it holds that each node is a distance at most 3 from a node in the ruling set. Hence, this results in a solution to the 2-3 ruling set problem. So this is an example of how our problem family is related to ruling sets. Now let's see an example that shows how our problem family is related to colorings. For this, consider a problem with parameters x0 to x beta, such that the sum of these parameters is at least c. I claim that if we are given a c coloring in input, then in zero rounds of communication, we can get a solution to our problem of interest. In fact, it is enough to map the input coloring into the color space of our problem in the problem family. And since the input coloring is a proper one, then it is a valid solution to our problem. In order to get our upper bound sequence, we will set P0 as the problem that has the first parameter to 1 and all the others to 0. And as we saw, we can transform a solution to this problem in 0 rounds to a solution of 2 beta ruling set. And we will set PK as a problem that we can solve in 0 rounds given a C coloring in input. We use the round elimination technique to show that there is a sequence of problems that are also in the family that we define, such that each problem is at most one round easier than the previous one, implying an upper bound of k rounds for two beta ruling sets. So if we want to see this from an algorithmic perspective and not from the perspective of round elimination, we start from problem pk and we, that we can solve in zero rounds with a C coloring in input, and we show how we can go from pi plus 1 to pi in one round, and the sequence of problems is defined such that the number of colors reduces at each step. So let's see an example of how we can reduce the number of colors in one round. For this, consider problem p with parameters 1, 3, and 4. So we have three levels and eight colors. At first, we group these colors in such a way that the first color of each level will be in group one, the second color of each level will be in group two, and so on. We then show how to reduce the colors in one round of communication in such a way that only the bottom colors of each group survive. Hence, in one step, we go from a problem with parameters 1, 3, and 4 to a problem with parameters 1, 2, and 1. Note that each surviving color in the new problem has the same level as it had before. The idea behind this color reduction is that each node that in P1, 3, 4 outputs a pointer, it will still continue to output a pointer in P1 to 1. On the other hand, if a node outputs a color, it looks at its one-hop neighborhood. If it does not have a neighbor with a color of the same group and a lower level, then it changes color and it picks the lowest level color of the same group. Otherwise, if there is a neighbor with a lower level color of the same group, it becomes a pointer node and points to this neighbor. Notice that nodes with level i either change color and lower their level or they become pointer nodes and in this case they keep the level they already had, so levels do not increase. One can show that this solution is a valid one for p1 to 1. What is left to show is the big picture of how the color space reduces and what is the result that we get from it. We can prove that if pi is described by a vector v and pj is described by a vector that is the prefix sum of v, then we can solve pi in one round if we are given a solution for pj. This means that, for example, if we are given a solution for the problem in the family that has all parameters equal to 1, then in one round we can solve p0. So what we do is to define P1 to be the problem with all parameters equal to 1. 
Similarly, we can define P2 to be the problem with parameters 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, since it is the prefix sum of the parameters of P1. In general, if we do the math, after k steps we get a problem pk where the sum of parameters is k plus beta choose beta. And this means that in k steps we can solve our desired problem p0. By finding the smallest k such that k plus beta choose beta is at least c, we get that given a c coloring we can solve two beta ruling sets in order of beta times c to the power of 1 over beta rounds. Our lower bound sequence of problems is basically obtained by relaxing the problems in our upper bound sequence, so that to make them satisfy the round elimination constraints of lower bound sequences. We lose precision during this process, and this is why our lower bound does not match our upper bound. To summarize, in this work we provide the first polylogarithmic lower bounds for ruling sets and for MIS on trees. Improving on the long standing omega of log star and lower bound of lineal. In order to show our results, we make use of the round elimination technique. Let me conclude with some open questions. Now we know that the complexity of the ruling set problem lies in the polylog M region, but we still don't know how many log factors are needed. And one open question is to understand the exact complexity of ruling sets. Also, another interesting question regards the complexity expressed as a function of delta. We know that MIS on line graphs requires linear in delta rounds. We believe that this should be true also for MIS on trees, and it would be very nice to be able to show this. Finally, all these open questions, and probably also many other mainstream open questions in the field, are strongly related to our understanding of the round elimination technique. Many thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it.